Hey, what's up guys? I just wanted to make a video about some players that I think are going to have a big impact for their team in the World's Junior Tournament that's coming up soon. All right, I got 15 players here that I want to keep my eye on for this year. I know a lot of like these players are going to have some great careers either in the NHL or the KHL. But here are some of my picks for like the, the guys you want to watch, you know. First of all, at number 15, we got Marco Rossi. He went ninth overall in this year's draft uh, because he is a really small guy. But I don't think that was a problem for him since he did lead the CHL, not just the WHL, the Oh, no, he played in the OHL, yeah. Not just the OHL, but the entire CHL in points last year. And you can't deny that. The reason I have him at 15 is because he's playing for Austria, which is definitely not the best hockey team uh, at this tournament. So he's going to have, like, he's not going to have a lot of games to prove that he's uh, one of the top dogs. But he's still going to be a guy you want to keep your eye on. All right, at number 14, I want to keep my eye on Jan Misak. So this guy is the captain for his country, and I think that's going to be a steal. Like in the future, like in a couple of years, people are going to look at this draft. They're going to see Jan Misak went in the second round to Montreal, and people are going to say, yeah, that's a steal. He Apparently, he has a great atti attitude. He's always uh, ready for the games. Just a great team guy in general that alone doesn't make you a great hockey player but it definitely helps what makes him like on another level is that he's also got a lot of skills you know so like he can score a lot of goals and there's a reason he has the c on his sweater this year all right next up pud colson i heard his name before it's his third year playing the world's junior he's like one of the rare cases where he, he can play like three years of world juniors for some reason he's a big guy playing with a lot of smaller guys like us like these young kids aren't usually like fully developed and from what i can see this guy can like he's definitely bigger than most of these players you got guys like rossi misak uh cofield all these guys are like really small but really skilled he's kind of like the opposite he's not as skilled but he he's definitely fast and he can play like big boy hockey which could you know a lot of people say that the game has moved from more of a physical game to a, a more skilled game. But in these young kids' eyes, if you see somebody that's got like 100 pounds on you, something like that, and you go in the corner against him, like, you're probably going to get hurt, you know? Like, you're not going to see a guy that's 6'5 get, like, bodied by a 5'4, you know? That's why I think you should keep your eyes on him. He doesn't play that much in the KHL from what I found, but there's a reason he's on this roster for Russia. And yeah, uh, definitely a guy you should watch. All right, so next up, we got Quinton Byfield. And I know he's on Team Canada, and Team Canada's roster is like really stacked with a lot of first-rounders from the past two years. And one of the big reasons why Canada is going to be so strong is because they have so much depth. And Quinton Byfield, although being the youngest player in the team, is an amazing player. There's a reason he went second overall. He's a really good two-way player that has a big, big presence on the ice. Like, he's a, he's a big guy for his age, you know? And uh, I think that the fact that Kirby Doc got injured is only going to help him uh, shine more in this tournament. Since he's most likely going to take that first line spot that Kirby Doc had. Yeah, he's going to be under a lot of spotlight with Team Canada. The only reason I have him this low is just because I didn't want to, like, pick all the Team Canada players, you know. But I think that he is a guy you want to keep your eye on, definitely. He's probably going to be their number one center. And, yeah, that's about it. All right, next up, we got Vili Ainola. Ainola? I'm, I'm sorry, I suck at pronouncing these names. I'm sorry if you guys get offended in the comments. It's okay, you can flame me. It's good for the YouTube algorithm. But anyways, so he, last year, he played in eight games with the Jets, which was a struggling team. Like, they had to put an 18-year-old defenseman in because their defense was so garbage last year. Still is, but yeah. And he was able to put on five points in these eight games, which is crazy for such a young defenseman and even this year i think he's got like 14 points in 17 games in the liga which is in like an easy league especially for defensemen to score in so you're definitely going to want to keep your eye on this guy he can really he can skate really well and like offensive defensemen are always 
good to have like you always want this guy that can run your power play and yeah all the great teams have him he's gonna be great next up we got our first kind of tandem or like duo i got spencer knight and dustin wolf as number nine and ten i have them together like i don't think wolf is like as good as spencer knight but together they're definitely the best goalie tandem in this tournament and if you have a goalie that's like really hot in the moment that can like, give you the goal like sometimes goaltenders can carry you through a tournament for sure so seeing these two guys together i've seen them practice i've seen the exhibition games i think they're going to be great i think this is going to be a dangerous team this u.s team they have great goaltending they have some good puck moving defensemen and they have some elite talent up front like it's crazy but yeah definitely keep your eyes on them we'll have to see if dustin wolf plays a lot or not but this goalie tandem like i put them together because i felt like it was appropriate but it's more like they're up there because of spencer knight i think he's sick all right next up i got tim stutzler stutzler i'm not sure how to pronounce his name either yeah he went third overall in uh in this year's uh draft uh he has insane playmaking abilities like his hands are great he has great vision he can make plays that you're not even gonna see or think about even after watching the replay you know the only reason why i have him down there is because the german team doesn't really look that strong to me but yeah if i had to say i don't think they're gonna win that many games uh but if their win is definitely going to be because of Stutza, you know. All right, next up, we got another tandem or duo. And these guys have always been mentioned together. It's Lucas Raymond and Holtz. These guys are like referred to as like twin brothers. Sedin like some would say. Maybe. Like, I, I don't know who says that. I say that now. But yeah, last year, they were insane in that tournament. I just watching them like create so much time and space on the ice for like a swedish team that wasn't the strongest was pretty crazy i loved watching these these two guys play and i knew they were gonna go high in this year's draft because of that but yeah that's why i have them at seven and six uh you can choose which one you put there i i'm i don't know i haven't watched enough of them play to know but i just like from what i remember all right next up at number five we got bowen byram i think that's his name Fuck, man, I suck with him. I should do more research on this. All right, so what I know about this guy is he's an elite defenseman. He should play in the NHL next season. This tournament is probably going to play 25 plus minutes. He's going to run the power play. He scores goals. He makes plays. He's like a great offensive defenseman. And yeah, I have a hard time seeing him not doing good. He's definitely a top prospect for the Avs. Like the only reason I could see him not making the team is because... He's got so much competition, like with the uh, inside the Avs organization, like especially now that they acquired Devin Taves this uh, this off season. Like he's got to fight for his spot against I think Eric Johnson, who's like an alternate captain or something like that, and some other guy like Ian Cole. But yeah, like he's got a tough job ahead of him, so he really wants to show up at this tournament and prove that he can play for the Avs. All right, next up, I got. Cole Caulfield. I might be a bit biased here, okay? I am a Habs fan, okay? So I will say I love watching Cole Caulfield play. He's a sniper. Like this guy, his shot, moi, the best. But again, his size is like the big, oh, but he's too small. He can't play in the league. But a lot of players have shown that being small doesn't mean being unable to play in the league. It's how you play that's important. And if you can score goals, like if you can shoot, like, there's guys like Patrick Kane, like Johnny Goudreau. These guys have put up, like, 100-point season. They won in the NHL. And I could see him have a lot of success uh, just in the first exhibition game against Finland, which is a, a pretty scary team, like, in that group. He scored two goals. Uh, yeah, I'm not worried about him not doing good this year. Like, last year, I think he went scoreless. But this year, he's definitely going to score goals, especially with our number three player on this list, Trevor Zegras. Zegras? Oh, I, yeah, let's just say Zegras. Last year, he led the tournament in assists. He's a crazy good playmaking player. He's going to make, like, some Crosby-like passes. Like, his vision is really good. And when you pair that up with, like, a good puck-moving defenseman like Jake Sanderson, a guy that can shoot and score, like Cole Caulfield, you got, like, 
a very dangerous one-two punch for this team. Yeah, so like I'm really excited to watch USA play. So, like, obviously, I'm Canadian. I don't want the US to win. I want Canada to win. But because Cole Caulfield is a Hab prospect, I'm definitely going to keep my eye on him. And Trevor Zegers is also really impressive to see play, you know? All right, at number two, I got Yaroslav. Askarov. I mean, what is there to say about this guy? He's like the dude. This guy is like the next best goalie. He's the next. I'm gonna call him the next Martin Brodar, you know, but probably better. N the next Vasilevsky. Okay, for the younger kids out there, he's a really big goalie, like big in size. He's strong. Last year at the tournament, he did really poorly, but he only played in two games. So maybe it's not like a fair assessment, but outside of this tournament, he's had over 920 save percentage in all of his seasons from like 16 to 20 year old, which is insane considering he's been playing in the KHL for like three, four years. I, I don't know, man. If this guy doesn't play in the NHL someday, I'm going to riot. If we can play as good as he did at the beginning of the season like in seven games he has a 962 save percentage in the khl which is insane man like he hasn't won every game either like he's carrying his team this year like that's crazy he's gonna do a bit a lot of damage with russia this year for sure so with that my number one player to watch is lindell why he's got 20 points in 17 games in the Liga as a 19 year old he's got 12 goals of those 20 points like that's a pure goal scorer right there he's got some good pieces around him in Finland so I think they're definitely gonna get a medal and yeah that, that's about it that's about all I got for my top 15 players to watch at the tournament obviously I'm gonna predict uh, that Canada gets the gold USA second place and then it's gonna be either russia or finland as third place those are my predictions and yeah that's that's about it thanks for watching guys uh if you guys have any other subjects you want me to talk about or anything else let me know in the comments and i'll try to reply i'll try to do a video on it yeah so thanks for watching